So we've done some thinking about the idea of a confidence interval and set up one for categorical data or a proportion. Conceptually, doing this for quantitative data, a mean and standard deviation, is identical. Take the point estimate, calculate the standard error, multiply by the critical value determined by the degree of confidence, and set up the interval. And so the setup for a mean and standard deviation looks remarkably similar. X bar is our mean, S is our sample standard deviation, N is our sample size, and we find our critical value and run the arithmetic. One small quirk here, though. What happened to Z, and what is T? Well, one of the complexities about using quantitative data is that we don't have a single point estimate like we do with categorical data. We have a point estimate and a spread. That spread induces some extra uncertainty in the distribution. In the same way that new to, no two point estimates are ever going to be perfectly identical, no two sample standard deviations are ever going to be perfectly identical. This is not a huge concern with very large sample sizes where the standard error gets cranked down to near zero. It is a notable concern when dealing with small sample sizes, anything from a few dozen to a few hundred. So we need a slightly modified distribution, one that reflects this extra ambiguity in the data, one that is a bit flatter on top and thicker in the tails. To find our critical value, we use a revised distribution, called a t-distribution or a student's t-distribution. Interesting story about the t-distribution. It was formulated by a man named William Seeley Gossett, who did small sample statistical research as a complement to his work as one of the head brewers at Guinness in Dublin, Ireland. Turns out that Guinness had a company policy against publishing scientific papers under an employee's real name, so Gossett chose the pseudonym student, allegedly off the front of the brand of notebook he used. His calculations remain the reference for dealing with small group probability distributions. A t-table looks a lot like a, a z-table, but is actually easier to use. First, find your preferred degree of confidence at the bottom. Next, take your sample size and subtract 1. This is your degrees of freedom, which is an actual technical term and not some sort of manifesto your uncle heard on late night Fox News or something. Cross-reference those, and you will find your critical value, which we will then use to set up your interval. Let's run through a quick example. Boxes of laundry detergent are filled by high-speed machinery, so they are not the most accurately weighted product on a shelf. Suppose we wanted to find the 95% confidence interval for the true weight in a random box of detergent. We select 16 boxes off a shelf and weigh the contents of each. Our mean weight is 4,070 grams with a standard deviation of 18 grams. On the t-table, we cross-reference 95% and 16 minus 1, or 15 degrees of freedom. Our critical value is 2.131. Everything else is as before. Our point estimate is 4,070, and our standard error is 18 divided by the square root of 16, or 4.5. 4,070 plus or minus 2.131 times 4.5 is 4,070 plus or minus about 9.59, so our 95% confidence interval is between 4060.41 and 4079.59, which is very slightly less than the claimed 4.08 kilograms or 4080 grams on the front of the box. Disputing and checking claims like a package weight is the next step in inferential statistics, one that we will get into when we talk about hypothesis testing.